Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. We got Coinbase in the news. We got Circle U.S. debt in just one month, ladies and gentlemen. And let's not forget about BRICS because now Janet Yellen is from the U.S. Secretary of Treasury is addressing the BRICS new reserve currency. And then we're going to hear from Ripple, XRP, Stellar, dominating swift integration. We got that and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, cryptocurrency market cap is $1.22 trillion. It's up 0.2%. Good morning. Bitcoin just over 30000 at 200 plus, And we see Ethereum 1868 and change. Tether market cap $83.3 billion, And we still don't know how the U.S. government feels about it. XRP, $0.46, cents, ladies and gentlemen. It's up 0.4 on the 24-hour and off by 2.1% on the seven day i want to share with this with you really quickly here because we have hundreds of people inside of the digital perspective mastermind group and i don't mind telling you that i know your life is busy my life's busy trying to keep up with this space and let me tell you i am proud to be a member myself in this group this group is truly a mastermind group there are people of all walks of life and success inside this group this is the learning curve that you've been looking for and and get focused. Be around the like-minded people you need to be around to help achieve your goals. And that's exactly what's happening inside of this group. Now, I don't mind telling you, if you are interested in private equity and you're non-accredited investor, you can join this group for more details about how you can access that. Click the link for the special offer underneath the video. Make the investment in yourself. We will see you inside. We start right here, and this is a great reminder for all of us. And I tell you, as someone who's recently come off of a massive attack, Coinbase users have taken on Twitter to report an increasing number of scams, phishing attacks involving the company's services and applications. And I want to broaden this to remind everybody that it doesn't have to be a crypto-styled email for it to be an attack. If you have a hobby or something you normally do online often, you better be careful that the email is from the actual site that you participate or engage in because there it doesn't have to be crypto related and it certainly can be. But I tell you to broaden your spectrum because you could get hit with a phishing attack through an email and all it takes is clicking on a link that you just thought was safe and the next thing you know you're in the middle of it and it's so difficult to get through it. So this is just a general reminder for everyone to please be careful what you click on. If you are uncertain of what is in your email box, do not open it. If it is from a crypto platform and you're not sure if it's legitimate go directly to your crypto platform and sign in don't go through the email that was sent to you if that platform is trying to engage with you they will have a notification inside the platform your secure platform and profile to contact you just a reminder there here we see Circle, the company behind the USDC stablecoin, has launched a programmable wallet as a service platform in production beta. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm getting a little giddy because uh, this looks more and more like the development of USDC stablecoin making its way to the fore to eventually become the official digital dollar for the United States. And I tell you, as much as CBDC scare me and all all of you about the lack of privacy I tell you I think something like a USDC stablecoin that's highly regulated but yet a third party private sector provider can keep a firewall between the US government trying to control your money and your transactions and this is probably just as great a reason as why, because U.S. debt explodes to $865 billion in one month. In one month. This is larger than Finland, Hong Kong, and Greece combined GDP in one month. And here is the thing. Like I said, 
I don't want the government controlling a central bank digital currency directly to my pocket and my digital wallet. They can't even control and do what they do now properly, right? $865 billion explosion in debt in one month, towering GDP over several countries. Here we know, and we're about to go through this. I want you to stay with me. I really do. London wants American crypto refugees. We've talked about this. Remember, it wasn't long ago we were showing footage of none other than Chris Larson over in London talking about crypto, knowing that London has been very vocal and not just vocal, but in taking action and to prove to the world that they are worthy of being that crypto hub. Regulation being the four and call it the Goldilocks zone for crypto regulation. This is why innovation is going to flee and has started to flee the United States because of the lack of clarity, which you are going to get a picture of in just one second. Now, I covered this yesterday and this is big and it's going to get even bigger because you're about to hear Jan Ye Janet Yellen address it. Now, she's going to downplay it, but you're still going to need to hear her address it. BRICS has announced and Russia announced yesterday that they will, in fact, be launching a new BRICS reserve currency backed by gold. And that will be announced in further detail next month. Then we covered here, courtesy of Linda P. Jones, shout out to her. And Jim Rickards predicts the end of U.S. dollar hedge money by next month. Now, he says it comes in stages. But the reality is, is he's suggesting that this is the kickoff to that transition and that end of times in that U.S. dollar reign. Now, I don't think it'll be in a day when it happens. I'm not trying to suggest that either way. But Jim is suggesting here that when the summit for the BRICS coalition happens next month, it will be the kickoff for the end of the U.S. dollar hedge money. Now, with that being said, here is Janet Yellen here discussing the announcement about the introduction of a new reserve currency from the BRICS coalition that is, in fact, gold-backed. ...goes to Andrea Schall from Reuters. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, the uh, Russian uh, government has announced that the, uh, it, it will launch a BRICS currency in August, and I wonder if you had a chance to speak with the Chinese about that effort. You've spoken here and in, in other venues about not wanting to see any countries being forced to choose sides. This particular move would create essentially a parallel currency to the U.S. as the world's reserve currency. Can you, you know, come up in your conversations? And you also talked about the um, head of the BOC. The Chinese government has not yet announced that he will be taking place. Is it your understanding that Pan, Pan will take over as central bank governor? Thank you. So on the currency issue, I just want to reiterate what I've said in the past, which is, I think the United States can rest assured that the dollar is going to play the dominant role in international uh, transactions, facilitating international transactions, and um, serving as a reserve currency in the years ahead. Um, I don't see that role being threatened by any development, um, including the one, one that you've mentioned. Uh, I've said previously and would reiterate that um, because of the role of the dollar and its um, ability to enable us to um, implement sanctions, there certainly is motivation in countries around the world to find an alternative. But um, all the data of which I'm aware shows that the dollar is is overwhelmingly close to 90 percent um, used in international transactions. And I don't think that there is a, an alternative that could possibly displace that for the foreseeable future. Well, you know, uh, you don't see something that can replace it. They just said they're going to announce it. They're doing it. You know, listen, let me, let, let, let me just level set here because I don't think this happens in a day. 
And, you know, she's right in the fact that 90% of the world still using U.S. dollars. We get all of that. One of the questions that did not get answered in this that should, or that should have been asked, so it could be answered, was about Saudi Arabia possibly joining the BRICS coalition and abandoning the petrodollar agreement that elevates the status of the national currency, the U.S. dollar, to a global reserve currency. Somehow, that question didn't get asked. And, you know, uh, watching all of this happen, look, we know from World War II and the transition from the pound as the global reserve currency to the U.S. dollar was about a 14, 15-year window there that that happened. But we are in a day of innovation. And the truth is, is that could be cut in half, maybe even less time. So it's not that I'm suggesting that it would be over a day, but she's absolutely downplaying the fact that almost half the world as a BRICS coalition will be introducing a gold back, gold back currency that will in fact compete with the dollar. And I think we all know that you can trust anything that's gold backed. We'll see. Meanwhile, here in the States, Tim Massad, former CFTC chairman, is going to give us the lowdown here. I want you to hear this. I'm only going to play a clip of it so you don't have to hear the whole thing. You don't have to stomach the whole thing. I did it for you. So I'm going to give you the spot that we need to talk about here and how something can be a commodity and a security. And then I want to show you some information as we move forward. Take a listen to this. I guess yeah. as a lawyer, I'm asking you, how strong is Gary Gensler's case that, in fact, these are securities under the Securities Acts as they exist now, and I guess under what is called the Howey test? Yeah, I think it's very strong. All they really need to prove is that at least one of these tokens is a security. Now, uh, and I think, you know, they've made allegations about uh, a couple dozen, across the two cases, there's really allegations about a couple dozen tokens, many of which are the largest trading tokens after Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I think the case is very strong. You were, of course, chair of the Commodities Future Trading Commission. Uh, yes. Is this, uh, you gotta be fish or fowl? I mean, can something be both a security as well as a commodity or does it yes, have to it go can, one way? David. It can be both. And that's something, it's an excellent question, David. That is something that people don't understand. Let me give you a simple example of that. The chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission has said Tether is a commodity. And he's right because there are futures contracts traded on Tether. Anytime you have a futures contract traded on something, that something can be classified as a commodity. Hmm. But if Tether were to pay interest, it doesn't today, but if the issuer of Tether said, we're now gonna pay interest to holders, that would make it a security. Let's stop right there, because uh, there's a great point inside of that, and I want to stop right there for a specific reason. One, let's take a look at this. Not that we're trying to retry the SEC versus Ripple case, but there have been XRP futures on the market, the open market, since at least 2016. Well, according to the former CFTC chairman, if it's got futures on it, it's a commodity. Then I want to talk about the, the opposing argument where he says here that if you're earning a yield, essentially, then that's going to make it a security. Tether doesn't pay a yield. Well, now I want to bring the conversation back to automated market makers. If we have XRP futures, and according to the former CFTC chairman, that makes it a commodity, let's talk about automated market makers because people say, oh, well, you're going to earn a yield on that. Well, that's not a yield. It's actually transaction fees. So this gets very interesting that there's even more evidence the way the automated market makers and the ability to participate as a market maker is not a yield, but yet a fee that is earned. And there is a difference in that transaction fee because you're making a market in the FX world. So this gets very interesting and I can't wait for this SEC decision. But while we're waiting, we see revolutionizing global payments. Ripple and Stellar dominate the SWIFT integration landscape. Yes, they do. And I tell you, you know, some of it is speculation, but we understand that SWIFT Go, SWIFT GPI, is in fact a race car body on top of a Model T Ford. Take a listen. SWIFT Go offers us the opportunity to change the paradigm for retail payments, for these smaller payments. 
we could take a look and see into two different jurisdictions and understand rules that are different than wire transfer. And we could integrate wire transfer to ACH or wire transfer to wire transfer, maybe wire transfer to instant payments. SwiftGo provides us with this transparency and an equal playing field despite the different jurisdictions. And that's a big deal. But we're still talking about SwiftGo, Swift GPI as in fact instant payments at best, not instant settlement. Then we got this news, which we talked about the other day, which was the Fed testing out the digital dollar. Now we see BNY uh, Mellon partners with other financial giants for global payments in digital ledgers. Well, some of these are Citibank, HSBC, as anticipated, Citigroup, HSBC, BNY Mellon, and other major financial institutions have been testing a regulated accountability network and also been called, these are called regulated liability networks for 24-hour wholesale payments using shared ledgers. Now, there's no, there's no evidence in this that this is the XRP ledger. This could be their private ledgers. But the reality of this is, is that we know that there are deep relationships with BNY Mellon and Ripple. We know this. This is not unknown. So if we come down here, Ripple and BNY Mellon has become a rival to Swift. I want to keep it going here. Citibank extends partnership with Ripple Power Volante. Volpe. Volante hung up into the middle of Fed now like you wouldn't believe. HSBC acknowledges XRP Ledger is a game changer for cross-border payments. So coming back to this gentleman here who is actually someone who is working with BNY Mellon, he knows the answer here. And he's not suggesting that they're going to abandon SWIFT. But what I'm suggesting is, is that we should watch out to see if we see any kind of partnership happen between SWIFT and its customers and XRP Ledger and Ripple and RippleNet and on-demand liquidity and the XLM Ledger and other ledgers that have real value that are designed to complement and enhance the financial system that currently exists. And that's where I'm going to put it today. It is something to watch, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't be more excited to do it with you. This is where we are. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.